Hello, this video is the start of a mini-series on subarrays. Here we see an example of matrix Z, which is 4x4, four four, containing the 16 different values shown. Sometimes we want to access an entire array. In that case, we can just call the variable name that the array is stored under, in this case Z. Other times, we want to extract just one value or one index. As an example, Z parentheses 3 comma 2 pulls out the 7 from Z. Why the 7? Because it is located at row 3, column 2. Other times, we want a section of values from that original matrix. This is called a subarray. In this example, we are pulling out the top left quadrant of matrix Z because I requested only the first two rows and two columns. More details coming soon on how to read this notation. First, let's deal with individual indices. Indices is simply the plural form of index. An index can be thought of as location, address, or slot within an array. For a 2D matrix, an index will usually be given as the row index followed by the column index. Let's look at matrix Z again. Z parentheses 3 comma 2 goes into that matrix and pulls out the value located in the third row and second column, which happens to be a 7. The same idea is applied to find the value 13, located at row 1, column 4. But what happens if I ask for the fifth row? MATLAB will return an error because that row doesn't exist. Vectors are a little simpler. We only have one dimension, so we only need one index. It does not matter if we are dealing with a row or a column vector. Looking at these examples, it is clear that the first index in Y holds a 9. Also, the fourth index in X holds an 11. But what about the fourth index in Y? Again, we get an error because Y is not that large. The word end is useful in array indexing. If you want to access a value from the final row or column, you can use the word end rather than counting up how big the array is. Looking at these examples, y parentheses end returns a 7 because that is the last value in y. z parentheses 3 comma end tells MATLAB to look into matrix z in the third row and last column, so it returns a 12. Z parentheses end comma 2 says to look in the last row and second column, which here is a 14. We can also choose an index that is relative to the last row or column, as in this final example. Here we see we're looking in the first row. As for the column, we look at one less than the last column. This leads us to the 3. In all of these examples, since we looked at an individual index, we were extracting a scalar. These scalars can be used just like any other scalars. For example, here we see them plugged into arithmetic operations, like multiply. When evaluating these, first extract the value and then perform the arithmetic. For example, here where I see y parentheses 1, I will substitute a 9. Then 9 times 2 gives 18. Here, where I see z 3 comma 2, I substitute a 7. Then 7 squared produces 49. 